Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast, and we are now going to be diving into some of the rookies in the NFL who are going to have the best opportunities to be impact players and players that I have belief in in terms of making their mark early on in their careers. As you can see for our video viewers, number one, it, and by the way, leaving quarterbacks out of this because I'm sure you've heard enough of the quarterback analysis. Every quarterback that plays has a chance to shine, so... I steered away from them here. Just wanted to make that note ahead of time. But uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the first player I have on this list. I think that a lot of times fans get excited about the rookie wide receivers and they can definitely make an impact. Last year we saw the likes of Zay Flowers and Rishi Rice end up having very meaningful roles for their teams and for competitive teams at that. But I do feel like, you know, a lot of times the overall excitement with the rookies, it can take a little bit more time than we initially anticipate to make a splash in the NFL. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a day one stud, in my opinion. He was incredibly pro-ready. You saw the way where he was able to do just about everything. I just feel like the patience that he plays with almost as well, all within being an extremely explosive athlete, he just looks the part. And I think he's going to have a crucial role in the Cardinals organization this upcoming season with Kyler Murray in a little bit of a prove-it year. Now at this point, hopefully, knock on wood, getting a full season out of him from an from a health standpoint. And Harrison can be the best wide receiver. I mean, De DeAndre Hopkins, obviously, you know, you look at the overall stature of him, but it was an older version of DeAndre Hopkins. I think that Marvin Harrison's ceiling is extremely high. Now, I probably ba just backed myself into a corner with the comparison to DeAndre Hopkins, so... I'm just going to leave it at Marvin Harrison Jr. can be, you know, the running mate for Kyler Murray for years to come. And if Kyler is going to succeed, where I have my doubts, I'm sure a lot of you have your doubts as we've done Kyler Murray content before. Um, I've seen a lot of negativity towards Kyler, but... He's still an ultra-talented player when he is healthy, and Marvin Harrison Jr. can help expand his game while just being, you know, a, a day-one guy for himself and carving out a role, whether it is Kyler, whether it's anyone else, you know, I expect him to be able to shine. The pick right after him, number five overall, Joe Alt. I know it's not necessarily the the sexy thing to talk about offensive linemen, but it is if you ask Jim Harbaugh because what he is looking to do is establish a new culture and it's playing in the trenches. And he's been very vocal about that, that it is extremely important to win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And Joe Alt, I mean, he is just a physical monster. And I think he is going to be able to step into a role here and sort of be the franchise guy for the Chargers is going to be extremely important to the run game, of course, which is sort of the Jim Harbaugh specialty, but also for the sake of being the blindside tackle to help protect Justin Herbert. I am. I do want to double check here really quick. He played left tackle in college. I do just want to confirm that Chargers are looking at having him at left because actually... That's why I, I'm glad I double-checked because I totally forgot for a second about Rashawn Slater. So, Alt is going to be on the right side. I mean, that is, if they live up to their potential and you, you know, you have two potential cornerstones at each tackle position, plus Zion Johnson, former first-round pick at left guard, I mean, that is a pretty impressive front. And, again, I do think that Alt is going to be very impactful as very quickly here um just back to the marvin harrison jr point shots below the belt says the cardinals haven't had a dependable go-to receiver since larry fitzgerald but those are some big shoes to fill i mean those are hall of fame shoes to fill but to be fair we're talking about marvin harrison jr when you talk about big shoes to fill it's literally in his name that he's the son of a future or uh, he's the son of a hall of famer in marvin harrison so 
I think that he is probably long before even being drafted by the Cardinals. He has had it in his mind that he has a lot to live up to. And I think that he's going to be able to pay that bill. Another offensive lineman here. Again, we're going to move off of them to some degree, but I think that this is an incredibly important spot for Olu Fashanu here with the New York Jets, considering, first off, I think that Fashanu, the fact that he dropped as far as he did was a little bit of a surprise to me. I think that he was, you know, neck and neck with Joe Alt for the best offensive tackle prospect in this draft. He ends up going to 11, which kind of ends up being almost a perfect spot. Now, the issue is, is he going to be buried in the depth chart from year one? They they go and they acquire Morgan Moses. Um, I always forget if they were traded for Moses. They brought in John Simpson and Morgan Moses. I always forget which one was free agency, which one was the trade. Both Ravens offensive starters from last season. But they also signed Tyron Smith to a deal. Now, that is an opportunity where Tyron Smith, when he plays, he is all pro caliber, but injuries have gotten the best of him in, you know, past seasons, and I feel like Fashanu could be able to be somebody um, who steps in in a big role, and Aaron Rodgers needs to have an offensive line in front of him at this point if he's going to have success. Fashanu could become a massive part of that. Brock Bowers is another one. Um, Brock Bowers, he kind of ends up in a situation where almost when you look at where the Raiders were in their draft positioning, they were hoping for a quarterback. But as, as soon as Bo Nix goes right in front of them, they didn't really have a choice because, you know, we, we saw the next quarterback didn't get drafted till Spencer Rattler and what was something like the fifth round, something along those lines. So Bowers probably knows to some degree he wasn't the number one option, but at that point, it was 100% the right decision for the Raiders because Bowers was the best player on the board. He is someone who can be extremely versatile in what he does. Now, that almost... It, it plays into an interesting aspect because you look at their quarterback situation, it's Gardner Minshew and it is Aiden O'Connell. Neither one of them are tremendous quarterback talents, so I think that it almost benefits Bowers if he does play a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage and can be a little bit of a safety valve. We saw Gardner Minshew last season really liked throwing to his tight ends as well, so I think that Bowers is going to just be a player that no matter what situation he's in, he's going to be able to find different ways to impact the field, impact the game, and I am really looking forward to seeing what he can provide almost as a sneaky threat behind Devontae Adams. Adams is going to get all of the attention, but Bowers can be somebody who does a lot of the damage off of that almost, and you know, watching the receiver documentary, Adams Adams was big on the idea of or the 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 show that came out on Netflix just recently. He he was talking about how he can learn to live with not getting the ball all the time as long as the offense looks like an actual offense and that it isn't quite as bad as it was last year during those games with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback, even when Brian Hoyer was in there briefly. It was a bad year for the Raiders offensively, but Bowers is just going to be a weapon where no matter where he is on the field, he is going to be a, a weapon. Uh, Shots Below the Belt says, why didn't the Raiders trade up for a quarterback? I guess the silver and black are all in with Minshew. And he was decent last year with the Colts. Um, I think that ultimately... I, I don't know why they didn't, truthfully, because they they are just kind of in that weird ground where I believe they had the 12th overall pick, which was already after a number of other teams, obviously, as we saw, what was it, six quarterbacks that went in the first round. There were a lot of teams they would have had to jump over. It would have cost them a lot from an asset perspective to be able to make that type of a move, um, but... I don't know. It is a good question. I guess they're in with Minshew, and Minshew gave Minshew gave the Colts a chance to win. And 
I feel like that's just what the Raiders are going to hope here as Antonio Pierce tries to lead this Raiders team into just being in on the product that they have because under McDaniels, it was a mess. Running a little long here, so we got to kick it into overdrive a little bit. Uh, Liatu Latu, the first defender drafted off of the board, went to the Indianapolis Colts. And Latu, I, I, just like some of the others I mentioned, if he is healthy, he is 100% going to be an impact guy. I thought this was a stellar pickup for the Colts, and I expect him to be one of the best edge rushers, you know, not just of this class, which was a very talented edge rusher class, but possibly, you know, of of the recent draft picks we've saw in the 2020s, I think that Latu has a ceiling maybe higher than anybody else. Byron Murphy of the Seattle Seahawks uh, played at Texas, and he's coming into a situation with Mike McDonald, the new head coach of Seattle, and I think that he is just going to be able to be a a force inside. Last year, we saw that the past couple years, the Seahawks have really struggled in terms of stopping the run, and they tried to address that need by going out at the trade dot the trade deadline last year, making a move for Leonard Williams. But I think that Byron Murphy can sort of slide into whatever you need out of him, whether it is D end or D tackle. I think he can provide multiple looks and I think that McDonald's gonna be able to get the most out of him. Terry on Arnold have been a day one fan of this pick for the Lions. They absolutely need to shore up that secondary. Arnold has elite talent, and I think that he is going to be incredibly important for the Lions as they do try and sort of come back with vengeance. They understand the target's going to be on their back after making the NFC Championship game. They're not sneaking up on anybody, but shoring up that defense is going to be massive, and I think that Arnold can be a part of that. A couple second round picks that we'll just quickly get through here. Mike Sanderstill of the Washington Commanders played played college ball at Michigan. Just an elite, elite athlete. He started off as a wide receiver, made the transition to the defensive side of the ball, and he's just incredibly versatile. I'm curious where they end up using him in terms of if they put him on the outside or if they have him running a nickel corner position, but... Either way, I think that Sanderstill is going to be able to carve out a very important role for himself in a defense led by new head coach Dan Quinn with that defensive uh, background, of course. Adam Frazier taken just after him. Probably going to be the starting center for the Steelers this upcoming season. There were a lot of things that were wrong with the Steelers offense last year. The quarterback being the most notable one. But also, the run game should have been significantly better than it was. Now, obviously, the lack of a pass game plays into that. But the offensive line just also was not good enough. Frazier was unbelievable at West Virginia. I was surprised that he dropped as far as he did. An injury late into his season is probably why that was part of the drop, but I think he's going to have an important role with the Steelers for the coming years. And then finally, Cole Bishop of the Buffalo Bills, another situation where they lost a lot of their help in the secondary last season. Bishop was a stud at the University of Utah, and I expect him to be able to carve out a very important role for himself in year one. Hard hitter too, so I'm really excited to see him. But let me know which rookies, again, if I, if I left off any rookies, there's going to be a number of them that have, you know, Im impactful roles, of course, but we only have so much time here. So these were just some of the biggest ones that stood out to me. Shots Below the Belt says, uh, nice analysis. A nice analysis. Well, thank you. Now, uh, a one-minute rant on how New England Patriots fans feel about Drake May. Well, very quickly here, what I'll give you on Drake May is I'm very excited. He was the quarterback that I wanted the Patriots to go out and get this season. Um, you know, it was it was between him and Jaden Daniels really seemed like that was going to be the case. I was, you know, watching last year almost – 
And it was such a dirty feeling. But I was rooting for them to lose at that point when they were so bad. And when they cost themselves the number two pick, I was really disappointed. But obviously, Jaden Daniels, who I still think can be a good player, he ends up going number two to Washington. And Drake May, I think that ultimately, as far as... Like, he's probably not going to get a ton of time this season. Um, obviously, they bring in Jacoby Brissett, who can be a great bridge quarterback option for them. And there's still things that he needs to work out, you know, mechanically. But you look at the physical build that he has, the arm talent that he has, he pretty much checks off all of the boxes that you could want from a quarterback in the NFL in 2024 or so. I think that if he even does make a debut, it's going to be late in the year. The Patriots have a late bye week this season, so it's not like there is sort of a clear spot for him to hop in in the middle of the season. When they come back from London, you know, partway through the season, they play there something like week seven-ish, I don't have the schedule in front of me, that maybe in one of those games, there's a Titans game, a Bears game, maybe one of those he could make a debut, but... I am definitely very encouraged with him for the years to come. But we're going to be taking our next break now. And when we come back on the other side, we're going to be diving into the upcoming season preview for the Indianapolis Colts. So we will be getting into that. But first, a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 